Hey y'all, welcome to The Crafty Cove, where we like to do farmhouse decor on a Dollar Tree budget. My name's Missy. It is the fifth, and that means it's time for another five under five. This month, our theme is thrift flips, and we're going to talk about that in just a little while, but we're going to get right into DIY number one. Y'all, this video is so out of my comfort zone. I'm using colors. I'm using floral patterns, <laughs> things that I don't normally use, but now I'm loving them. So I got these spools at a yard sale and they were a dollar a piece. So for this first one, I'm going to use two of the spools. One of them I'm going to take paint this teal color. This is not a heavy coat. I'm dipping my brush in my paint and then dabbing some off with a paper towel. That just makes it, I don't even have to use sandpaper or anything to distress it because it looks distressed just from the way I paint this. I paint every part of it except that middle around the edges and the tops and the bottoms. Those do not need to be painted. Then we're going to move on to the second one. Do the same exact thing with some Maze uh, Waverly chalk paint. And again, just a really rough coat so that the distressing doesn't even have to be done to this. Now I'm going to take two of the bottle caps from the Dollar Tree. We're going to remove the hangers. One of them we're going to use the same Maze color. We're going to paint all around the inside edge not worrying about the center because we're going to do something else with that a little later on and then once we get the inside edge done we are going to paint the bottom and the outside edge again not worrying about that center edge and after we get the maze one finished we are going to do the exact same color or the exact same thing on the next one with the um turquoisey color whatever you want to call this color um, but I do do two good coats because this is metal and sometimes it's hard to cover now I'm going to take two pieces of this scrapbook paper from Hobby Lobby that I found and I'm going to trace out these two bottle caps and cut that out now all of my projects today are pioneer woman inspired with the colors the patterns things like that I I'm probably really late on the train because people I know people used to collect these things uh, like pioneer woman and I never did but I'm I don't know I'm starting to get into the colors and the florals so I hope you all enjoy this as much as I do but after we get that finished we're just going to put some Mod Podge down in the center of those bottle caps and Mod Podge that scrapbook paper right into the middle of it again out of my comfort zone but I'm loving how these turned out after we get all that finished we're going to take two of these galvanized pieces from the dollar store one says welcome and one says home i go ahead and take the hardware off and then i go ahead and cover those with one good coat of waverly white chalk paint then i'm going to coat them both in mod podge and i'm going to use these napkins to cover these um, i had to go away from my camera and did not show y'all me actually putting the napkins on i'm working in my um, kitchen today because i'm babysitting my granddaughter and she will not let me go in the craft room without her in there and it's too much of a mess for her to go in there so i had to put my heat press over on a different part of um, my kitchen so i apologize for that but we're just taking these two ply napkins cutting them down to the size we need and then iron them ironing them on with my heat press y'all this is a new trick for me i've seen it done before but i've never been brave enough to try it if you mod podge with napkins or tissue paper you can use a lighter to get into like all these little nooks and crannies i probably would not have done this if it were not for this trick because that would have been so hard to cut around with scissors or with a craft knife but this works out perfectly now it's time to start putting our pieces together i'm going to take the turquoise blue uh, spool and the maize colored bottle cap and we're going to glue those together using uh, just regular old Gorilla Super Glue and some Gorilla Hot Glue. I'm going to take the welcome piece and put that on the front of that. We're going to do the same exact thing to the maize piece and put on the turquoise bottle cap and the home sign on the front of that. Then I used some Pioneer Woman um, ribbon and made little bows for them and that's it. Y'all let me know what you think. I've noticed she's very contrasting with her colors and her prints. So that's why I wanted to try this. I love how it turned out. For me being a neutral girl usually, I am totally in love with these. But y'all let me know in the comments below what you think. So of course it's our five under five and every month Emily from Farm Charm Chic, Chic and I, sorry, get together and we come up with a new theme. This month's theme is thrift flips and our new guest host this month is Aimless Squirrel. 
And we just ask that you all would just watch the playlist below. You will get so much inspiration from this. I promise. DIY number two, we're going to take another one of these spools and we are going to paint this exactly the same way with one coat of Waverly White chalk paint. Again, just dipping our brush in our paint, dabbing it off, and that way we don't have to distress. Now, I'm going to slow this down here in just a minute because my DIY cost me more than $5, but that was because of the choices that I made, but I'm going to show you how you can do this with Dollar Tree materials. We're making a tiered tray. So, take some of these Dollar Tree rounds. I have these left over from Valentine's Day and you could use those and that would make your total cost $3. Or you could use some of the Dollar Tree uh, chargers, cover those or paint those or whatever you wanted to do. And again, that would cost you $3. But I was doing this Pioneer Woman and I had these in my stash from about a year ago. I had bought at Walmart to make one of these tiered trays and never got around to it. I loved the scalloped edging and how all that worked but again there are ways for you to do this for less than five dollars from the dollar tree so what i'm going to do i'm going to use this gorilla super glue i'm going to put that right in the middle i'm going to put my hot glue around the edges of this spool here and we're going to glue it down to our first plate and this color just was perfect for this of these plates now we're going to do the same exact thing on the flip side of the spool super glue in the middle hot glue on the outside that's just for the short term long term hold i'm using a down rod here to make sure that i get these fairly even or as even as i can when i stack them on top of each other now i'm going to take a mini rolling pin from amazon and i'm going to cut it with my little uh, saw here if I can remember I will put this in the description box below if I don't y'all remind me and I will make sure to get a link out to y'all after that here's what it looks like I just cut that rolling pin in half now what I'm or a little more than half now what I'm going to do with the bigger end is just paint that with another rough coat of Waverly white chalk paint just one coat and we are just going to glue that right to the top of our uh, top plate and that makes it look like a little filigree or I don't even know what you would call it but y'all I'm in love with this I cannot wait to decorate this my next video may very well be tiered tray decor pioneer woman inspired <laughs> because of this DIY so again I hope and pray that you all like this one as much as I do okay y'all we are right on to DIY number three these may be my favorite of this entire video so I got these little houses at a yard sale for a dollar. They were regularly $5 at, I believe, Target Dollar Spot. I used a set of these in another video just a few videos back, and these were some more that I had. So the first one, I lost footage. I just painted that a burgundy Craft Smart paint, fronts and backs, or front and back. And now I'm going to use some ivory paint from, I can't remember where, to paint the roof line and the sides. Then I'm gonna use the maize colored chalk paint to paint the two other houses, fronts and backs on both of those two good coats, and then use the ivory again to paint the sides. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of this, again, a floral ribbon that I would never use, not ribbon, uh, scrapbook paper from Hobby Lobby. We're going to cut it down to size. I apologize for the background noise, y'all. I'm outside and it is July 1st and here people are letting off fireworks. So please forgive me. Anyway, after we get that cut down, we're gonna put some Mod Podge on the roof and we are going to stick our scrapbook paper right to that and then cut it down. Then for the other side, I'm going to lay my scrapbook paper over it, figure out where that little chimney is and I'm going to cut a hole out so that my scrapbook paper can fit perfectly around the little stove pipe chimney whatever you want to call it and there won't be any like trying to piece this together and i'm going to do this on all three of the houses the exact same scrapbook paper and the exact same way after we get that all all that on there we just cut it down to the size it needs on the burgundy one i made a um, decal that says farm to table that i'm going to stick on there and then on the two maize ones, I cut out with that same scrapbook paper, two little images off of my Cricut. One is a barn and that will go on the smaller house. And the other is a chicken, pig, and cow stacked. And that will go on the medium sized house. These turned out so cute. 
I and I was shocked that my Cricut would cut this scrapbook paper like this. That's a game changer for me. I'm so excited about that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take this like burlap trim that I got from the Dollar Tree and we are going to trim each house with the burlap trim. Um, there's three different ones so I use one on each house. That way they kind of, I mean they go together, it gives it that cohesive look but they all have their own little look also with the different types of ribbons. On this farm to table one I take that Pioneer Woman ribbon make a small little shoestring bow and glue that right to the top at the peaks of the roof line and i don't do that to the other two just on this burgundy one and then that is it these are so simple and y'all i mean honestly even with the scrapbook paper the decals the ribbon all of that these are these three were less than three dollars for me i am so excited about this let me know what y'all think in the comments below did you all know I have another channel here on YouTube? It's called Bless Southern Nest. It's just a cleaning lifestyle channel with a little bit of baking thrown in. If you all would like to check that out, I'll leave the link in my description box below. Now on to DIY number four. I love this one also. Again, contrasting colors, contrasting um, prints, but it turned out so cute, I think. So I got this little chalkboard thing from, I believe I got this from a thrift store. And this was $4. And I think it was $4 because it was broken there. Like you can see where it came apart really easy. But I'm just going to glue that back together. That did not scare me at all. But everywhere that is white on here, I'm using this Real Navy by um, Apple Barrel Paint. And I'm doing two good coats on all of the white spaces on this. Now I'm going to take one of the cow cows from the Dollar Tree. Another two-ply napkin. I'm going to cut it down to the size that I need. Paint it white first, then cover it in Mod Podge. After the Mod Podge is completely dry, I go over to my heat press and press it down. And of course, I'm using the lighter trick again, y'all. This has saved my sanity because y'all have seen me cut these things out before. And this is so much easier to do it this way. Next, I'm going to take this blue floral paper. Sorry I didn't show you. I just Mod Podge that down to the chalk chalkboard part of this piece and then cut off the excess. After that, I'm going to glue this green cowl on this blue paper. Again, contrasting um, prints, but I think it totally works. But y'all let me know in the comments below what you think. Is this just too much? Are you happy that I'm branching out a little bit or would you rather me just to stick with my neutral colors here on my channel? Y'all, I only have one little piece of buffalo check in this video that you'll see in the next DIY. I just went ahead and made another super simple shoestring bow with that same Pioneer Woman, woman ribbon. Again, a contrasting print. Stuck that right on there and that's it. I just love how that contrasts, how it looks so different. But I want to know what y'all think. These videos I make for y'all, so definitely let me know what you think in the comments below. We are on to our final DIY. I got this bump pan at, I wanna say this was at a thrift store for $1.99. I'm not doing anything with this. I am leaving it exactly like it is. It's already distressed and rustic and I love it so it's not getting changed. We are going to, however, take one of my chickens. We're going to, we're not even gonna worry about painting this one. We are just going to Mod Podge this paper right on there. After we cut that all out, we're going to use two tumbling tower blocks, paint those with the Maze Waverly chalk paint, and paint a dowel rod from a package from Walmart with the same Waverly chalk, or Maze Waverly chalk paint. Now we're going to put this together. I'm going to glue down one block towards the back of the that part right there, and then we are going to take our dowel rod, we're going to stick it down in there, and glue that to the middle of that tumbling tower block. Then we're gonna take the second tumbling tower block and do the same thing in the front. Glue it to the bump pan and the dowel rod. Now, this part's a little hard for y'all to see because of my angle and I apologize. All we're going to do is take our chicken. I did not cover the back. Y'all can if you want to, but it wasn't that big of a deal to me. We're just gonna glue that right to our dowel rod. Now we're gonna take some of this vine and we're going to cover our dowel rod here just to give it a little bit of something just a little bit more than just the paint 
Next, I'm going to take some paper towels. I didn't have any floral foam on this day. I'm gonna put those down in my pan just to give a little bit of height. This works out perfectly and it's a cheap solution. Here's the only buffalo check in this entire video. Can you all believe it? I'm just going to put that down into the pan and then we're just gonna start decorating. I'm going to use some of these wooden eggs, some sunflowers, all of that, and just decorate this up. Now, depending on what you use to actually decorate the pan, that it, the inside like I'm doing here, that will actually determine what your price is. So you can go as little as you want or as much. So that is totally up to you. Then I just glued a sunflower right in the middle of my little chicken, and that's it. Y'all look at this. I love it. Again, totally out of the box for me, totally out of my comfort zone. But after I got it all set up right here in my kitchen, I was like, you know what? I, I really like this. I like the colors. I like the contrast of the, of the prints and of the fabrics and all of that. So this may be the turn of a page for Crafty Cove. Don't get me wrong. I'm always going to do um, some neutral DIYs, but I'm loving how these turned out. Please let me know in the description box below what y'all think. I appreciate each and every one of you. Don't forget to check out the playlist below. It is filled with some amazing crafters that join us every single month and give the best inspiration no matter what our theme is. I appreciate and love each and every one of you. Thanks for watching. Y'all come back now. You hear?